Hello children, welcome to yet another beautiful Sunday. You are all very welcome. I'm so pleased to be here because the best place to be at is in the house of God. So once again, welcome. Our memory verse for today can be found in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We shall say it again. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Go to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I would go over it so that we can say it after me later, okay? Shall we go? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Go to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. So children, I will invite Auntie Debbie to come and stand by me whilst I say the memory verse. Then she will do the actions along for us to also learn it, so I to stick in our minds, okay? So let's clap for Auntie Debbie while she comes. So we say our memory verse, once again, shall we all go and listen and look at Auntie, okay? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We we'll say it again. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Go to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Shall we do the actions once more? I think you love it, right? Okay, let's go one more time. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. One more time. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you, and I'll make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Very good. Let's clap for ourselves. So, Auntie Debbie, thank you so much. Now, children, do you understand what the word of God has just told us? God says, we should only trust and obey. And all other things we need, he will give to us. We don't need any other thing, but just to trust the Lord and obey. He will give us everything that our heart desires. So we should learn to read the word of God, pray every day as the Bible says, we read and pray and we just ask. And he will bless us, just as the word has said, about how God just told Abraham to go. He didn't even know where he was going. And then he just listened and obeyed. And the Lord truly blessed him. So we thank the Lord for his word. And as children, as little as we are, we believe the Lord will send his Holy Spirit to open our ears and our hearts to always listen to his word 
trust and obey, and all other things will come to us. In Jesus' name we believe. Amen. Hello, children. You are welcome to Sunday school today. I hope you had a very good week and you were good, as always. Yes, I know that. Let's pray. Our hands together like this. Father, we want to thank you this morning for bringing us to Sunday school. We thank you for taking us through the week. We pray that even as we listen to your word, you would help us to understand everything we learned today so that we can continue to be good boys and girls. We are also praying that you bring our friends who have forgotten to join so that we can learn together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right? So it's time for some songs. And I want you to sing along and then dance. We'll be right back. You are welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the song. So last week, we learned a lot of things, right? We learned that God called Abraham to leave his city and then go to a land that he would show him. We also learned that even though Abraham didn't know where God was leading him, he still trusted him to keep his promise. Do you remember that word that we learned? That means to trust something, or even though you cannot see it. Who remembers? Uh-huh. Good, that is faith. So in today's lesson, we are going to see some other ways in which Abraham showed faith in God. And we'll see that from Genesis. I hope you know where Genesis is, right? And you all have your Bibles and your pens or pencils and then also your notebook. I want you to take them and then write. Yes, Genesis is in the first book of the Bible. So I want you to write these passages down. They are plenty. So we'll just read the first part, and then I want you to read the rest later. 
And I'll tell you the story in the rest, but I want you to read them later. All right. So we have Genesis, and my, this is my Bible. My Bible is, is, is on this device. So take yours too. Genesis chapter 13, 5 to 13. And then we'll continue from Genesis chapter 14, verses 14 to 18. And then Genesis chapter 14, verses 21 to 23. So I'm just reading the first part. But as you are turning to the Bible, I have something that I want to show you. Ta-da! Now, you see these things. If you have to choose between these gifts, which one would you go for? This, that. Well, I am very sure that most of you are pointing to this one. As a matter of fact, I think that I'll go for this one too. Well, but why would you want to go for this? Yeah, it looks nicer, right? Well, let's see what is inside. Oops, that's just nose mask. Is there anything else? Oh, and a broken pencil. It's not as nice as we all thought it would be, right? Well, let's see what's in the other one. It doesn't look that great, does it? No, let's still see. Wow, this is beautiful. Hey, there are more things inside. Oh, and this and that. What do we use this for? Let me see. Wow, it can actually move. You see, so these are very good things, but it didn't look very good on the outside. So we know that appearances can be deceiving. And sometimes when we make our decisions, based on what looks good on the outside. We can choose things that aren't great. So in today's lesson, we are going to see how a bad decision also led to some troubles. Now, I'm sure you are ready to read with me. So let's go. We are reading from Genesis 13, 5 to 13. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and heads and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the headsmen of Abram's livestock and the headsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were uh, dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me, and between your headsmen and my headsmen, for we are kinsmen. It's not the whole land before you. Separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zohar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east. Thus, they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. Amen. So this is where I will end this, but I want you to read the, the rest. I'll tell you the, the story in those ones also. Now from what we have just read, we notice that Abraham's men and then Lot's men were fighting. And that is because everybody wanted the best part of the land for their animals to eat. We know that they need water, they need green grass and all of that. But you see, Abram wanted peace. So he said, we don't have to fight. I want you to, let's just separate so that we can spread. But I want you to choose first. Abram wanted Lot to choose first. So you see, he wasn't selfish. He wanted Lot to make the first choice. 
Now, according to what we just read, Lot then looked around and realized that the Jordan Valley had plenty water and it was also beautiful like the garden of the Lord. And so he chose that place all for himself. If you look at the verse 11 very well, he said that he chose for himself all the Jordan Valley. So he wasn't thinking about Abraham, what Abraham will get. He was just interested in himself and his people. But you see, as for Abraham, he knew that because he trusted God, it doesn't matter which part of the land he gets, the Lord will still bless him. And truly, the part that Abraham got was Canaan. And do you know what? Canaan was the land that God had promised to give to Abraham. But unfortunately for Lot, where he chose, he went down and settled among the people of Sodom. Do you remember how the Bible described the people of Sodom? That one is in verse 13, the last one. It says what? The people of Sodom were wicked and great sinners against the Lord. Now, from the verse four, uh, chapter 14, which I want you to read later, we realize that later on, there was war in the area surrounding Sodom. And so the Sodom people, they were defeated. And the people captured all the people. And they also captured Lot and his family. And they took away all their belongings. Now, Abram got to know about this story. Now, if you were Abram, tell me, don't lie. What would you say? Perhaps you say, aha, uh -huh, when he chose all that land that he thought was good, that serves him right. Or maybe like you are, you are, sometimes when you are laughing at your friends who are in trouble, you will say, a hey, is sweet for you. But that is not a good thing to say. Abram didn't do that. Instead, he gathered his very strong men and went after the people who had captured Lot and the people of Sodom. And they defeated them and brought them back. And all the people that were with them, including their goods, their animals, they got everything back. On their way, then they met a king called King Melchizedek. He is the king of Salem. And he's, he was also a priest of God. Now, Abram gave him some of the items as a way of showing thanks to the Lord for his victory. But do you know that another person also came to meet Abram? And this was the king of Sodom, who had run away. When he realized that they were, uh, he, they were defeating his people, he ran. But now that Abram had captured, I mean, brought back the people, he came back from his hiding place and told Abram that, okay, you can give me back all my people, but you keep, 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 the, keep the, the gifts, keep the goods, everything, take them for yourself. But Abram said, no. Do you know why? Because Abraham knew that the king of Sodom was a very wicked man. So he didn't want him to come back someday and say, eh, eh, I made you rich, I made you rich. Abraham knew that because he trusted in God, it is only God who can make him rich. It is only God who can bless him. So over here, children, we see that Abraham again is making godly choices because of his faith in God. On the other hand, we realize that Lot made very selfish decision. And it is the same thing. We also like Abraham and Lot. Sometimes we have to make all kinds of decisions. Some of them big, some small. Maybe decision about what to wear, uh, what program on TV to watch, and all of that. The thing is that if we make our decisions based on what looks good on the outside alone, we can make very um, 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 serious mistakes like Lot did. We can land ourselves into trouble, but we should behave like Abraham, always trusting God and asking him to lead us. Now, talking about choices, there is one very important choice or decision that all of us must make. And that is the decision about whether to follow Christ or not. Have you made that decision? 
The Bible says that we have all sinned and we deserve punishment. But because God loves us, that's why he sent Jesus to die for us. And that when we accept Jesus as our savior and we ask him to come and live in our hearts, we can have eternal life. I am asking you again, have you made that decision? Now, deciding to follow Jesus, maybe some of your friends will say that, mm -mm, that's not a good thing to do. Um, it doesn't really look nice. It doesn't look right. Just like what we saw here. On the outside, it didn't look right. But inside, that was the best thing that we had. And following Jesus is the best decision you can ever make. As we close our eyes to end our story today, I want you to think about this carefully. If you have already made that decision, that's a good thing. Continue to ask God to lead you so that you can make the best decisions in everything. But if you haven't taken that decision of following Christ, as we close our eyes, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you very much for your word. I thank you that you love me. Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I pray that you would forgive me all my sins. And I ask that Jesus, you come and live in my heart so that I can have eternal life. Thank you for listening to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, you have done so well. Now, you see, just to be sure that you were listening to what I was saying, I have a few questions. There are not plenty, only six that I want to ask you, right? And this question is like, you know, who am I? You know, that kind of game. So I will say the thing, and then I'll ask who am I, and you tell me what the answer is, all right? Ready to go? Right, the first one. I stayed in the land God promised to me. Who am I? Yes, that's Abram. Good. Number two. I chose to live in the nicest looking land. Who do you think this person is? Great. That's Lot. The third one. You are doing very well. You are doing well. The third one. I was the land on which Abraham lived after he was separated from Lot. Which land? Canaan. You guys are really good. We have just two left. I made godly choices and trusted God's promises. Who do you think this is? Great, that's Abraham. Five, I have plenty water. And I am beautiful like the garden of the Lord. Uh-huh. The Jordan Valley. And the last one. I lived close to the wicked city of Sodom. Who am I? That is Lot. Clap for yourselves. You have done so, 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 so well. And thank you all for coming. So we just have our final prayer. And then we'll go and dance to our song, after which we're going to have our craft. So close your eyes and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for bringing us to Sunday school. We thank you for teaching us that the best choice we can ever make is to follow you. We want to follow you. And like um, Abraham, Lord, we want to make the best decisions and trust you at all times. We pray that you would help us and lead us so that we can always do right. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's go and dance and we'll come back for our craft. Bye-bye.
Hello, lovely ones. You are welcome to our craft session for today. So we are going to make a craft when Abraham and Lot had to separate from each other and Abraham gave Lot the opportunity to choose first. We have our Manila cards, scissors to cut it out, and we have some spoons, and then a cello tape, and then some pen, and then a permanent marker. Okay. So let's try and trace out a hand, a pointing hand. If you need help, I'm sure mommy or daddy can help you to draw a beautiful pointing hand. So after this, we'll cut it out. It's good you trace it first so that when you're cutting, you're sure you don't make mistakes. And now we'll try and cut it out. Cut it out gently so that your craft comes out beautiful. Okay, so we have a first hand cut out. Let's trace another one. So one hand for Lot and another one for Abraham. Great, we have all cut out now. You can put this aside. So you could actually use stick, but I prefer to use plastic spoons. So I'm going to cut this out to cut the top so that I can use the down part. Please try and get help if you need to, so that you don't hurt yourself.
Okay. But before we, so we'll salutate this together. But before we do that, let's first write on it so that it will be easier afterwards. So one color is going for Abraham and another one for Lot. Let's get this. Okay, so let's put some inscription here. Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot separated. Okay. Because we are going to have the two hands going opposite direction, it's good so that you have your inscription on the other side. Then you can have one going left and one going right. So, um, so if this is Abraham, So what I have written here is, okay, if you choose left, I will choose right. So Abraham gave that, that opportunity for Lot to choose which way he wants to go before they parted. Or get the sticks glued to the hand to make it handy. Great, this is what we have for our crafts. So, if you choose, if you choose right, then I'll choose left. Great, I hope you like your craft for today. And we thank God for helping us to understand what happened, the opportunity that Abraham gave to Lord, even in this lesson that we took today. Thank you.